Here we have a Ben's key fob that came in for repair. Customer filled the mail-in form and he came in locally to drop the fob. Now Ben's key fobs, they come in many different types. The one that we got in today is the one with the triangular panic button. And the reason I mentioned the triangular panic button is the layout of the board is different. It's a special type of a key fob. You have the black fob with the circular panic button. You have the one with the triangular panic button and you have the chrome fob with the circular panic button. You also have the flip key fobs from a long time ago, but right now we are dealing with the one that has the triangular panic button. The reason I mentioned the triangular panic button is because the board layout is different. If you look here, we have the infrared transmitter, which looks different than any key fob in the market, any Benz key fob in the market. I mean, I do have one right next to me. It looks like I used that component from this fob. Let me grab another one. Before we start the video, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is a China Shenzhen based PCB manufacturer and printed circuit board assembler with more than a decade in the field of PCB prototype and fabrication. They offer a wide variety of services, including 3D printing, CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, and much more. PCBWay is committed to meeting all your PCB needs. They offer quality on time delivery and competitive pricing. One to two layer boards starts at $5 with 24 hours turnaround. Get an instant quote by visiting PCBWay.com or click on the link below and make sure to check them out. We work on Ben's key fobs every single day. We have an infrared transmitter right here. You see how this component has two pads, one here and one here. This one looks different. This one is totally different. If we flip the fob, the other fob, it has one in the back and one in the front. Then you have the coil, which is exposed. On this one here, the coil is not exposed. Okay, so everything about this fob is different. If you look at the firmware chip on this fob, which we already took out, we swapped it to another board. The firmware chip on this fob has pins. How many pins? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 30 pin chip. We can remove the chip and we can put the chip on a good working board and that will work. But on this one here, the firmware chip is BGA, which means the chip has solder balls under it. There are no stencils that you can buy to rebuild that chip, but we have a lot of stencils and we can make it work, no problem. Now, the chip, German name, Fichte, or Apfel, or Weed, they come in many different names, but I know that that's the firmware chip right here. I mean, I have another similar triangular board right next to me. And if you look here, you see how the name Apple, it's the same chip, but they have many different names. Maybe many different makers of that chip. Weed, W-E-I-D-E, -E, or Apple, or Fichte, if I'm spelling this wrong for my German viewers. So now if we look at the customer's fob, which I already disassembled, he really wants it done. And he said it's a nightmare going to a Benz dealership. It takes a long time and a lot of paperwork, and that's why we get all the Benz key fobs here to fix. Plus, you can expect to pay $700 to $1,200 from a Benz dealership. Customer is saving a lot by doing it here, even with expedited service, and we do it quick. Now, if you look at the customer's motherboard, or fob, let me put in a battery. If we press on the unlock button, we do not see a light. If we press on the trunk button, press and hold, we do not see a light. And we do not even see a lock button on the customer's fob. We know something is going on with the fob. Let's take a look quick. I already looked at the board. Now what happened was the coil was broken. The customer took the fob somewhere else and they had like a huge solder blob here. Now I did find flux at the Maxwell chip and at the Apple chip. So it looks like the shop that worked on this, they probably reflowed the chips and that did not solve the problem. 
I looked everywhere else on the board and did not see anything obvious. If you flip the board, empty, nothing. Now I still check back of the board, maybe a break in the line because of corrosion or whatever the case may be, but this one here is clean. I do not see anything wrong on back of the board. The only thing that I saw wrong on this board was the coil, which I already fixed, but fob is still not working. And I did see signs of flux on the Maxwell chip and Apple chip. So right now what we're gonna do is use a good working donor board. I have a lot of donor boards in the shop here. And we're gonna test to make sure the donor board is working before using that board. I put a battery in, and now if we click on the unlock button, we see a light, right? The fob is working. A light alone does not mean the fob is working, but I did test this fob, and the fob is working. I have a tester here. You see, when I click on the unlock button, we see two lights, one for frequency and one for infrared. Okay, so we know the fob is working. So we're gonna use this fob, this motherboard, to fix the customer's motherboard. And how are we gonna do that? We're gonna desolder the Apple chip, the firmware chip, we're gonna reball it, and we're gonna solder it back on this board. Let's go through the process and see how that is done. The button is on the top, and pin number one is on the left. Let's remove Fichte. Does anyone know what Fichte means in German? Apple is Apple, right? What's Fichte, if I'm spelling the word right? Right now I have a narrow nozzle. And I'm going to put the airspeed down. I do not want to disturb other components on the board. That's a two-layer board, so components will start flying away if airspeed is high and temperature is high. We do not need that chip. All right, the chip is out. And pin number one is on the bottom left. We're going to apply some flux while the board is still hot and we're going to wick off those pads. Now it's always better to mix unleaded with leaded to make the wicking process a lot easier. But that's a two layer board and the board is already hot so it's not a big deal. Let's go over this one more time quick. Great. Looking good. The button is on top and pin number one is on the bottom. Let's grab the customer's board. And that's not the customer's board, that's another donor board I have here. And that's the customer's board. I worked on that coil. And now we're going to remove not the Fichte chip, but the Apple chip. Look at this. I can already tell what the problem is. And that's a very common issue with those fobs. See? You see how the pad is broken off the chip? Right here. Now that's a very common issue with those fobs pad will break off from this pin. How are we going to fix it? 
now the chip is gonna wobble all over the place so what we're gonna do is grab our chip holder if you are in the same type of business or you are doing this as a hobby you can purchase the chip holder of our site and the chip holder looks something like this all right just log in to northridgefix.com click on shop add to cart checkout pay and we almost always ship out same day you can purchase everything from our site including the genuine Amtec flux that we are using we are one of the largest distributors of the flux we carry and sell everything from this amazing microscope hot air station soldering station braidwick tweezers whatever you need we have all in one place northwestfix.com click on shop at the car checkout pay and we almost always ship out same day easy So the chip is secured between the two blades. And now we're gonna wick solder balls of the chip. Nice and gentle. We're going to use our anti-glare light so we can see better. And what we want to do is expose that trace. And that trace is microscopic. We only have one chance fixing that chip. If we mess it up, it's game over. I mean, this here is a 0 0.3 millimeter wire. Just compare the trace size to that wire. We're not going to be able to use that tip. Let me switch tips. I'm currently using NF.mini. Mini. I'm going to use the bent tip for NF.mini. Mini. The bent tip has a very fine tip. Look. See? Now what I need to do is add some solder onto that tip. And I can tell you this right now, if it's not for the NF dot mini pen, this job would be impossible. Right, so we're gonna add UV mask so we can secure that pad down on the board. Then we're gonna scrape off that pad and leave the edges. UV light. And a tiny bit of hot air. And we're gonna have a better than factory pad.
Bummer. I just realized the microphone was not working. All that talk for nothing. The fob is working. We did an amazing job. We rebuilt the chip. We tested the unlock button, lock button, trunk button, and panic button. Everything is working. But right now, one final thing I want to do, which I already did without a voice, was use a fob tester to test the fob. We want to make sure that we have frequency and we have infrared. Unlock button is good. We're going to press on the trunk button. We're going to press on the lock button. And finally, we're going to press on the panic button. And we see both frequency and infrared. So we did an amazing job. We're going to end the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. Leave it down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll do something else in the next video.